Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy, Johnny Cage Banger, here with another tutorial video. This tutorial is going to be on just, it's really, it's really just dark trap, but for the sake of people searching and people wondering what it is, we'll just say it's a TM88 emotional uh, tutorial. If you guys don't listen to the beats when I post them, um, I just, I, and I didn't mean to like listen, but I didn't mean to, uh, do I didn't mean to make this beat. I just like, it just started happening. So I'm going to just play um, some of it and let you just hear what I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you how I did this beat. <laughs> Okay, so that tail was a little long on that sample, but you see what I mean when I say that, um, the emotion. So let's go into the beat as far as, like, what I was thinking when I was doing it. So as I was making a beat, let's just, uh, say this. I love Electra 2. It's my favorite VST. I do advise you to, uh, get you, get you this right here. So this is a D-March expansion pack um volume three inception and you see i made it into a little chord pattern i always tell you guys about chord codes i learned it at busy works beat so if y'all want to learn like some of the basics as far as like music production his channel really helped me out a lot so uh without me really getting super super in detail it's just building chords building chords is something that you should really learn how to do if you really want to make beats at a higher quality, it's not the same than just like that's it's that's okay, but you build texture and you build ambience when you uh make chords out of stuff. So and you can just simply um get a scale. I always tell you guys about making a scale. You can just look at my past videos and I always show you guys how to make a scale. So, um, so that's what I had. And then, um, this didn't even, this was, this was like last. So got in Savage, uh, Bank, Electra. Once again, that's really, is my favorite. My favorite VST it has so much stuff in it. So. Um, it's called weird pluck thing, and that's exactly how I would describe it. Cause so you can just press anywhere and just make a melody. So I just did a simple melody up, down, up, down like a roller coaster. And 
And this is all this is all on key with uh with this. Where is it at? With this. So like I say, just make a uh make a scale and you'll be able to follow and really um keep everything on key. So as you can see the main the main key or main note rather that we working with is E. So then we go into this sample right here. I grabbed this sample from uh what sample pack was it? Was it dope? I'll put the link in the description where you can copy some some sample packs. Yeah, it was this. So I took that and I basically just reversed it. So this is what you get when you if you don't reverse it, this is what you get. You see what I'm saying? And and that wouldn't let's see. It's really not bad, but the reverse on it, it just make it so much sweeter. See, and it give you, it give you some more melody. It give you when you reverse it. You know what I'm saying? Music sounds good reverse. Whatever you, whatever your uh, thought is about reverse music or whatever, but reverse music does sound good, especially when you sample it and you putting drums around it with melody around it. That's why TM8, uh, TM88, they do it. That's why they reverse melodies, period, because they just sound cool and it gives it a different feel without changing the, uh, the key. So when you go, when you grab these samples from here, the cool thing about it, this dude, uh, what is his name? I think it's Serious Beats or something like that. But it's drumkitsupply.com, and he already kind of chops the sample for you. So, um, or at least he pre chops it. You go in and chop it more, but um, he lets it so you can just come in here, right click, put it to four bars, and then you good, and it'll play. And as you can see, most people, when they do samples, their biggest problem is like, well, it's not on, it don't sound right. Or when they do, they can't put other instruments on it because they don't, they don't know the key or whatever. Detect pitch regions. Boom. It's on E. So this is the main key for it. E. Hold on. So regardless if it's on B or whatever, it don't, it's going to play the same every time. So for the sake, let's just put it to E. But the way I have it set... Right here, you don't, you can't change the uh, pitch just by pressing uh, the key up or going up and down the octave. It is locked in to its natural uh, root note, which is E. Boom! So that's just some, that's just some more flavor added to it. So I just figured I had to put some seasoning on it, which is basically just adding background noise, something in the background that'll captivate them without just having a sample just looping the whole time. Uh, so. It's the same sample, but uh, as you can see, I have the pitch turned all the way down, so it's going real dark, almost like if it was a weekend uh, kind of beat. And then you come here, so. You see this plan over here, this is my, um. This is my send channel, basically where I send the sounds to um, add whatever I want to in it. So basically what I did was I brought, I grabbed Reverb 2, bring the dry all the way down, the wet all the way up, and then uh, separate it. So I got it all the way at 100%. And as you can see, if I cut it off... You see what I'm saying? Ain't got, ain't got nothing on it, so... You give it that deep reverb, and you can hear that here. But you see what I'm saying? 
you just added more texture to it. You putting more stuff on it, so you can be able to play around with your instrument. So you just it's not just at a constant loop. Even though it's good, you don't want the beat changing a thousand times. You do want new sounds to be introduced, and you want to be able to hear and pick new sounds to focus on. That's what me as a producer. That's what I do when I listen to music. I pick certain things that I want to listen to, and I enjoy them. Maybe I just want to hear the kick hitting real hard, and the headphones I got. I can uh, press a button and turn my high ends up. And what that does, it just makes my 808s and my kicks, or anybody's 808s and kicks, hit super hard. So, Next is the 808. Let's just check the, the tempo on it. I'll tell you why I have it like this shortly. That has nothing to do with the hit of it or if it's hitting hard or whatever. Right click edit. Detect pitch readings. Just tell me it's at F. What is this, F major or something like that? I feel like Nick Cannon. I can't read music. I just know how to play it. But uh, it's at the F right there. So that just lets you know that when you follow on the scale, you can still have everything on key. So like I say, we starting with E because that was the whole um, root note of this whole beat, the whole melody. So now we're going from A to B. Well, E to E, but from the A part of the B to the B part. So this is the drum pattern. I'll play the melody first, just to show you how we what we just did there. Then I'll play the um, drum pattern. <laughs> So that's tough. Now let's go to the drum pattern. Which is which is a, a fairly basic drum pattern. So the eight oh eight, let me cut all that shit back on. The 808, super simple. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one. So. Like I say, if you if you implement a scale and put the scale all up and down your beat, you can look at my videos and I show you guys how to do scales and everything like that. If you don't know how to build a scale already, uh, just follow. The, you can follow the scale with this stuff. So once you have your scale, you'll be able to see where everything is and how everything is going to work. Or you can just look at these little highlighted bits right here. And that's pretty much a scale for you right there. This is what's going to let you know. So that's the uh, that's the easiest part. But I just like to put my own scale because it's different scales that you can see. You got uh, minor 7 scale, aeolian scale, blue scale, diminished chords uh, scale. So it's multiple scales. I don't know what scale this is that's right here. But... I didn't follow it clearly, but you can you can have it any way that you want to have it if you have your scale. So just make sure your eight are on key, bro. That's it. And most people, when they making dark beats, they think the eight oh eight has to be super dark and low like that. No, you really want you want the melody to be dark, but you want the eight oh eight to be bright. Because you want them to go A and B, and that's how you get the dark trap because it's all smooth and simple without everything just being so dark, like the pitch is just raw all the way down, and it's just a dark hidden beat. You want high 808s and you want low melody, and that's the flavor for it. That's the trick. So imagine, imagine if I had all this super low to like four. even like C. You see what I'm saying? Now you get
getting the flavor going. I go and grab the kicks. I love this uh, kick in my DP. Uh, London on the track, Lil Uzi. I don't know why I put so many names for it, but it was just what I was listening to with my diet, my musical diet. I'm going to be coming out with something telling y'all about the producer's diet, showing you guys how to build when you're making beats. Build your mental, build your, your uh, forte, your repertoire, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically a diet of listening, what to listen to. Uh, because if you just keep listening to the same stuff, you're going to keep making them same beats. If you just be listening to Zaytoven, you're going to only make Zaytoven type beats. You only listen to this type of music, you're only going to make them type of beats. So it's multiple things that you need to listen to and diet yourself from and for in order to get all these different type of styles, listen to some different type of music, listen to a different producer, listen to a different uh, genre, whatever it is. But my kicks. You see, it ain't it ain't nothing on it. In the mix, it's just a soft clipper. This Edison, this Edison was for the uh, the 808, but it's nothing. That was just me checking it. So I don't need Edison. Edison is not helping my 808. So it's clearly not doing nothing to my 808. People think I'm doing something crazy with my 808. When really I'm just uh I'm just turning them up. That's all you gotta do. Just turn them up. Turn your stuff up how you want it. You see my kicks is turned up. And most people is having a problem trying to see how to change. Like if you have you bring something over and all of a sudden No matter where you pressing, you can't change the pitch. Just come here to time stretcher, right click. And press none, turn auto to E generic. Now you good. Now you can press anywhere and change it to whatever you need to change it to. As far as staying on the uh the scale. So then what I do is edit, right click at it, detect pitch regions. It's telling me it's on A. All I do is come here, right click A, root note A. Then I can come in and put wherever I want to put. You don't have to put your kick on E just because everything on E. Because it's a kick, it's just a short burst. So you just want it to punch through. You don't want it like... You just want it... You know what I'm saying? Like that. It don't need to hit as hard as the 808. like, Because it, it, it ain't going to mesh like that. So you put it right there. And that's how you keep it at a nice punchy uh, sound. <laughs> Next, easy clap, of course. It's just a basic clap. That's it. Hi hat pattern. What was this? Yeah, this is from my no key kit. But I always just grab it out of here. Out of my producer's block antidote, just because it be right there. And I got too much stuff in this no key drum kit. I just I just like going to the producer's block. It's nice and easy. You see, this is how you get that rhythm. You're building up the rhythm with the hi-hat, so that's the real treat. You see what I'm saying? When you add these, when you add riffs and you add little changes in your hi-hats, that's how you get a groove. Everything don't have to be just... Tap, 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 all the way down, and everything don't have to have riffs in it. You just add little riffs here and there. Sometimes you go crazy. So you see in this right here, I just got one, just as that. Then I got three in here. Then I got just one right there. Then I got three in here. This is the same. And that's the repetition that gives it the bounce. So this is the exact replica. Boom. It's the exact replica. What's next? The beat was super easy to create. Um, 
It wasn't hard to. It was. It was harder to think about like, what do I put in here? How do I do it? And it really didn't take the. It didn't take long enough. Of course. See the 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 introduction is how you do it. So I'm gonna get into this the layout. I'm gonna get into that shortly. I ain't even used this. I ain't even used that. Where's my triangle? I ain't even use a triangle. So that was all I used. That was all I used. I had uh, some triangle patterns that I wanted to use. I didn't um, end up using them for the beat because I didn't think uh, it mattered. I didn't think it really was something I wanted to put in there. Everything was good how it was. So my mix, let's see. My mix was super easy. The only thing I did was took the bass out of these, uh, out of all my instruments. Just take the bass out. That's what really all you got to do. Because you want your 808 to have all this over here. You want your 808 to be in there. So. So you see it ain't nothing on my 808s. Ain't nothing on my kicks. Because you don't really need. People think you need to have all these mixes and you have to do all this crazy stuff with all these VSTs and mastering VSTs man all you really have to do is just turn it up that's what I do so don't nobody complain about my mixes so now we go to the layout which is the easiest part because I tell you guys this every time introducing the instruments is how you lay out a beat you don't just lay the whole beat pattern down and then just go instantly as soon as the beat come on <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I got all kind of drops and I'm taking instruments out and I'm having all these uh variations in the beat and that's causing the beat to feel more. You can feel the beat more and it's not just some track. Boom, and it's playing and it's just repetition, repetition. Nothing is changing, nothing is being introduced, nothing new. So when I make my intros, I usually try to go from nothing and then build up the entire song. And as you can see, this is a replica. This right here is the exact replica of this. Where is it at? Right here. So this is the verse. This is the second verse. It's all the same. All of this is the exact same. And that's just how you that's how you build the beat. All you gotta really do is copy the verse over. You don't have to like keep changing stuff unless you may want to like take an eight oh eight out here, take the hi hats out. That's something really that's preference. But as far as like laying out a beat, I always tell you guys that the intro is one to seventeen. The verse is seventeen to forty one. The build up is forty one to forty nine. Wow, the build up is forty one to forty nine. And then the ver uh the chorus rather is 49 or 65 and that's just really how you do it and then you just copy all that so from 65 to 17 or 17 to 65 whatever you want to do this is where he is rapping this is the verse this is how you do all of that so and just copy it over as soon as the chorus is over highlight drag and you make a whole new one now you got a brand new where is it here yeah now you got a brand new verse and the beat is done. And then you just take stuff out, rearrange, if you want to. I really don't. Sometimes I just take an 808 out, uh, 80 out here, like I said, or a hi-hat out or something like that. But that's the simple way to lay it out, bro. So I got tutorials showing y'all how to lay beats out anyway. So this is really just showing y'all the dark trap. So I'm going to play the beat. Uh, thanks for the support, guys. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more videos. The upload schedule is Monday, tutorial, Wednesday, tutorial. Friday tutorial now whatever other videos I post are just extra so I may do a live cook up 
and a tutorial for Monday or live cook up Tuesday or whatever. But for tutorials, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this is the one for Wednesday. Thank you guys for all the support. You guys are the best audience on YouTube. You guys are always liking my videos, commenting and everything. And I just appreciate it so much because it really helps out the channel. Um, That's it, guys. Just just keep learning. Keep making beats, man. Go get go get the M's. You can get real M's, man. Go get the real M's. Johnny Cage Ranger, guys. Peace.